In today's video, we are going to talk about, yet again, more labs. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Dude, it's about to rain and thunder. Why are we cutting the grass right now? I mean, really. Hi guys, I'm Dee. I am a nurse who has worked in rheumatology as well as a rheumatology patient myself. I make weekly videos Thursdays at noon. So if that sounds like something that is interesting to you guys, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you guys don't miss any of my videos. Without further ado, let's go on to the video. Complement and muscle enzymes. So these two labs are used to help diagnose and rule out certain autoimmune conditions, but they also can be used as safety labs if you do end up with these diagnoses to see how well your disease is responding to the treatment plan that you guys end up do, uh, putting together with your doctor. So I'm going to start out with complement. You might have heard these as C3 and C4. And what those are is basically a type of immune system lab that will be low if you have lupus in general. So it's one of those clues that can help rule out lupus or point towards it. Okay. And if you end up getting this diagnosis, it will be a part of what we call safety labs. So it will help determine how well your disease is responding to treatment. Okay, this isn't the only lab they're going to look at to see how your lupus is doing. It's just one of those clues that they put together in there. If you're in that stage where lupus is one of those things they're ruling out, because like I said in my previous video that I will leave a card up somewhere around here, somewhere there's a card. Um, I did mention that a lot of symptoms in a lot of these autoimmune conditions look very similar early on. So, for example, if you don't have that classic butterfly rash with lupus and you're just having joint pain and swelling, okay, that's also in rheumatoid arthritis. It could be either one. And some of these uh, symptom changes happen over time. So it may look like multiple things and then later on we go and see, oh, this is starting to look more like this instead of that. You know what I'm saying? Now the second lab I'm going to talk about today are muscle enzymes and there are several of them. But the purpose of muscle enzymes is to show if there is some damage going on to the muscle. If you fall and scrape your knee and it's bleeding, that's because you had an injury to your knee and it's bleeding. Similarly, when the immune system attacks your muscles, you're instead of bleeding blood per se, it's going to be bleeding out those muscle enzymes. I, uh, that's the best way I can uh, describe how it works. So that's why if there's an increase of any of these muscle enzymes, it would point more towards the different types of myositis. Okay, so there's polymyositis, which means it's impacting more than one muscle. There's dermatomyositis, which means it's also causing like a skin rash on top of it. The first one is going to be aldolase. Okay, so aldolase is one of the muscle enzymes that could end up elevated if the muscle has taken some sort of damage. Another muscle enzyme that might also be looked at is called either CK or CPK. They're used interchangeably, but the fancy word is creatinine kinase. It's another muscle enzyme. And the last one that will also be looked at potentially is LDH. So I'm going to throw in one other little bonus lab that can pop up in myositis type conditions too. And that is called factor eight related antigen. So it's not an enzyme. It, you might also know the name as Willebrand factor eight related antigen. And what it is, is it's also a blood work that is done and it is mainly found in the juvenile myositis subtypes, 
but it can pop up in adults as well. So you might see that blood work in your chart too if they if they are ruling out or trying to see if you have some sort of myositis type of condition going on. I hope that this video was helpful. If you found this information helpful for somebody else, be sure to share this video. Let me know your feedback, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what your experiences have been. If you have either of these conditions or you're in that process right now where they're trying to rule stuff out, I think that information helps people who are new, who are trying to understand the whole autoimmune process. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, bye. Hi, Kitty. You're not much of a camera kitty, are you?